Uh, here's my uh, latest book haul. I went to two thrift stores today and two library sales, or just regular libraries where they had used books for sale. And I got, it looks like around 94 paperback books, mostly romance novels, for the whopping price of, I think it was around $14. Uh, so I'm just getting, a lot of them are Barbara Cartland's, as you can see there, and a whole bunch of other, mostly historical. But uh, we're just going to run through all these. I also have some, uh, a few non-romance ones right there, and that we'll also we'll take a look at um, at the end. I'm going to set those aside for now, though. Hopefully I'll remember. And I think I'll just start with uh, this stack here as we go through them. The Turquoise Mask by Phyllis A. Whitney. Looks like sort of a romantic suspense type book. This was published by Fawcett in the 70s. We have a Victoria Holt, The Captive, also published by Fawcett. And this was like right around 1987, I believe. We have two books by Lucy Walker. Sweet and Far Away, book number four, published by Beagle Books. And... Follow Your Star, book number eight, and also published by, well, that's by Ballantyne. It looks like they had started taking over. She was an Australian writer. And now we get into the Harlequins here. Here are two old Harlequin romances with their red edges. This one looks interesting, Rose in the Bud. It looks like it takes place in Venice. Yep. There's another one there. Elizabeth Ashton, Scourged Wings. And I'm going to probably have to run through these a lot faster if I hope to get through this uh, stack in something uh, approaching a timely fashion. Harlequin. These are all Harlequin Temptation uh, books from the 1980s. Book number 27. 72 and 90. Rita Clay Estrada. I wonder, was she the one that the Rita's awards were named after? I do not know the RWA awards. Maybe someone can let me know. This one was actually in the free box at the library. Uh, Medical Romance. Uh, book number, it's hard to see there. Let's see. 853, it looks like, from December 2016. These are larger print. Now, Medical Romance apparently is not available uh, in the United States at stores. It's through the website only. And some Harlequin Intrigue here from the 1990s. Book number 336. That one looks interesting. Dark Star. Book number 353. And a Carla Cassidy. I've read one of hers. She's a very prolific uh, romantic suspense writer. Uh, that's book number 411. I believe that was part of a trilogy. And two more Harlequin Intrigues. And again, I think these ones were also in the uh, free box. Book number 490 and book number 521. Now we have some Anne Stewart here. First we have an American Romance, book number 361. And this one takes place in the 1930s. It was part of a uh, series where, um, within American Romance, where uh, they were celebrating the 20th century at the end of uh, at the end of the century. Two more uh, with Anne Stewart. Both of the, these are anthologies. This Night and Day, and Gail Wilson uh, and Anne Stewart. Anne Stewart writes the story uh, Night inside here, so it has two stories. And Gail Wilson writes Day. Night is a sequel to Cat's Paw and Cat's Paw 2, both of which were uh, Harlequin Intrigue, earlier Harlequin Intrigues by Anne Stewart, both of which I also have, and Hot Pursuit, and these are two, uh, three stories, a very thick book, um, reprinting um, three Harlequin novels by those writers. And we have three Harlequin historicals here, I believe, from the 80s to 90s. 
this one's in kind of rough condition. I think I also got that. Well, no, I actually think that was at the thrift store for like 25 cents or 20 cents. They were One of the thrift stores had paperbacks for uh, five for a dollar. There's another Harlequin historical. And then this one as well. Okay, now we're going to get to the Barbara Cartlands. And again, like I said, I'm going to have to run through these pretty quickly. And these were uh, Barbara Cartland uh, books. They actually, this one is an early one. It doesn't have a number on it, but they're published by Pyramid Books in the late 60s, early 70s. That one says book number five of the Pyramid series. And you can see there it says 17 and 23. These Pyramid uh, Barbara Cartlands, they have little green edges. Well, look, well, at least that one did. Um, they have a kind of more older-looking style than the later Bantam ones, but they look very uh, cool. Now, the very th Barbara Cartland books are very thin, usually, reads. We have two more there. I was very pleased when I went to the thrift store and saw all these in the five for a dollar bins, as you can imagine. And just to complete the pyramid run here, here we have there. And then they changed the uh, style of the front covers. This one says book number 41, but it's still by pyramid. First time in paperback, book number 74. This one takes place in the 1920s. Which is kind of interesting. It's Barbara Carlin on the back. All right, now we get to the Bantam Barbara Carlin Library. This is actually book number one in the series from the 1970s. And this has a cool cover The Castle of Fear. And some more of them here. I love these old, you know, they're deliberately old-fashioned looking covers because most of Barbara Carlin's stuff were historical novels. Now she has, she's not very uh, popular these days because of sort of the chaste, uh, she was sort of a uh, more, the more chaste style of writing at a time when romance was uh, becoming more racier. Uh, so these were a little more like sweet type romances. Now I had only recently learned that there was also a Barbara Cartland's Library of Love series and it was old books, old romance novels that Barbara Cartland had grown up with. They're a numbered series um, but it says condensed and edited by Barbara Cartland. So here we have two books by Eleanor Glynn who was also who most famously is the author of it and they have the number is number 14 and you can see here it being the Clara Bow movie the silent film from uh, around 1927 or 26 or whatever and there's two more these I think it only ran a maybe a couple more books and that was done we're not done with the Barbara Cartlands there's the Jove uh, series, uh, Camfield Novel of Love, that's book number 25. Now this is a British edition of a Barbara Cartland book published by Arrow. And published in Great Britain. Arrow Books. Now BMI in the 1990s reprinted some of the, I think they were some of the Pyramid books, they reprinted them in new editions. So these are just... Uh, reprints of some that had already been done. Now I have two Georgette Hare books. This one was actually in the free box. It is torn on the side. It's a very thick book. Uh, Harper's Monogram Regency. And uh, there's a little insert here. Whoa. For a series of romance novels. 
timeless romance ser service. So that was a line. This one has an introduction by Susan Wiggs. And we have two signet regencies, one by Marion Chesney, who passed away recently. This one, unfortunately, has a sticker on it, and I wasn't able to tear it off without wrecking the book, so I think I'm going to leave it. And Z Zebra published a lot of regencies in the 1980s, 90s, and 2000s. And we have three Zebra regencies there. Now Scholastic, the publisher of you know, kids' books and for teenagers, had a series called Sunfire, and I'd never gotten one of those before. It's a historical series, so that's that. This is also a British uh, book, Erica James. I didn't know anything about it, published by Orion. But uh, I've always found you know, the British books interesting. Sometimes they weren't reprinted here in the U.S., so you had to get them as imports. Two books by Elizabeth Lowell. This is a, his, a Harlequin historical, actually. Reckless Love. And then this one, interestingly, is Elizabeth Lowell under her pen name, Anne Maxwell. And it is a futuristic romance. And it talks about, takes her to a planet called Change, a faraway planet. Catherine Coulter. This is a reprint of one of her first books. I think probably her first, it was, which was a gothic, as you can tell from the uh, thing uh, cover or the sort of the step back is what they call it. And she has a note in here somewhere. So I'm find it. Maybe it was on the back cover. Yes, where she talks about this being an expansion of her original novel. We have a whole bunch of Joanna Lindsay books. These are from the, well, Tender of the Storms from the 1980s, but Surrender My Loves from the 90s. And some more there, Joanna Lindsay. These have step backs, is what they are referred to in the trade. These are all from the 1990s. Light a Single Candle, which is apparently a ghost story by Julie Moffat, published by Zebra. The historical. Judith McNaught is how I believe her name is pronounced. This is a historical. This Loving Land by Dorothy Garlick. These are all historical novels here. Fern Michaels, White Fire. Brenda Joyce, now you can recognize the face of Fabio on there. And this is, I think from the night, there she is right there, Brenda Joyce. Connie Mason, who writes a lot of historical. There's another step back. Two by Karen Robards in historical novels. The Perfect Princess by Elizabeth Thornton. Victoria Alexander, and the step back there. Julia Quinn, you know, we're getting into the more recent uh, books. Two by Sarah McLean. A Rogue by Any Other Name. These are both the beginnings of uh, two different series. And Grace Burroughs, a Regency, I believe, and Donna Kaufman. This is a more recent, a contemporary. And finally, those uh, non-romance ones I mentioned. This is John D. MacDonald. He's a mystery writer. Cancel all our vows. But it's kind of presented as like a a romance novel of infidelity. Harlequin's worldwide imprint in the 1980, early 80s had a series called Raven House Mysteries, which was a mystery series. So it wasn't romance. This is book number 36. I'd never gotten one of those before. I'd heard about them, but didn't have one. And I got a biography of Helen Hayes from the 1960s, the actress, which is kind of uh, interesting. And finally, 
uh, Isaac Asimov's Foundation and Empire. This was in the, uh, one of the libraries has a fill a bag for a dollar, and I got both of these in that thing. We're just fill a bag. Anthony Trollope's Miss McKenzie, which I believe is from 1865. Yeah, first published 1865. So, anyways, so that is my haul. <laughs> and I got all of that for $14 total um, plus tax. And that was like around 94 bucks. Uh, so hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Thanks for watching.